I just want to give anyone, any straggler, an opportunity to come in. Thank you all so much for coming tonight and braving coronavirus. <laughs> Had a better turnout than we expected, actually. Bienvenidos todos. Gracias por venir. This is our first inaugural Best Spanish Language Picture Book Award ceremony, and we are delighted that you have braved the elements to come. Um, I'm Cindy Weil. I'm director of the Center for Children's Literature. A hearty welcome to our award winners, their families, friends, editors, publicists, and agents. We're delighted that you're here with us today. We're also welcome, uh, we're welcoming those of you who are joining us on the live stream. Many people decided to stay home, and thanks to KidLit, they're able to monitor the ceremonies. A very special thank you to Holiday House and Harper Collins, who sponsored travel for Juji Morales and Anika Aldemoy Denise, respectively. And should you wish to share your thoughts on today's ceremony with your networks, our event hashtag is hashtag BSC Premio 20, hashtag CCL Bank Street, and that is on the back of your programs if you need a refresher. And now it is my great honor to introduce the president of Bank Street College of Education, Shale Palakow Saransky. Welcome, everyone. I'm Shale Palakosaransky, president of Bank Street College of Education. It's wonderful to see you all here. Um, bienvenidos to our inaugural biennial Best Spang Spanish Language Picture Book Award Ceremony. We're delighted to welcome our winners and honorees, their families, editors, publicists, agents, and friends. We're so thrilled to welcome the legendary Juji Morales to keynote our inaugural event. Juji, I want to personally take a moment to congratulate you on winning the Children's Book Committee 2019 Flora Stieglitz Strauss Award for nonfiction for your book Dreamers. Dreamers and its Spanish, lang Spanish language equivalent are destined to become classics in the canon of children's literature. Thank you for being here. As I mentioned, this is the first year for Bank Street's Children's Book Committee awarding of this prize. The Book Committee was, a, was actually founded more than 100 years ago to help parents, teachers, and librarians choose the books that children will find captivating and transforming. Every year, it produces comprehensive, annotated book lists for children from birth up through age 16. Four years ago, with the same goals, an affiliate of the committee began producing a separate picture book list for works in Spanish. This affiliate is made up of Spanish-speaking members of the committee. Bank Street College faculty and staff and also alumni who use the same processes as we use for our other awards to review and recommend books. Last year, the committee decided to develop a best Spanish language picture book award to help recognize talent in this field, promote the joy of reading in Spanish for children, and bring attention to outstanding books that portray, affirm, and celebrate the Latinx cultural experience. The committee, through these prizes, as a highly informed source of Spanish-speaking children's book experts, seeks to encourage publishers to publish even more high-quality work. For Bank Street, recognition of these books is particularly important to its mission of inclusivity in serving the city's schools. 41% of the children attending New York's public schools are of Latin ancestry. 15% are from Spanish-speaking families. Thousands of children in the, in the Department of Education are receiving bilingual education services. It's also noteworthy that there are more than 500 dual language schools in New York City. Many English-speaking parents also want their children to grow up speaking two languages. 
high quality, culturally authentic picture books are important tools for attaining bilingualism. To choose this award, made up of Spanish-speaking Children's Book Committee members, Bank Street College faculty and alumni, CUNY faculty and librarians, and folks from the New York Public Library, sat together and reviewed a list of outstanding books generated from 2018 and 2019. Judges considered cultural authenticity in text and artwork, as well as accuracy of portrayal of the experience of a facet of the Spanish-speaking world. They looked for texts that gave insights into Latin America, the Caribbean, Spain, or Latinx culture in the United States. They looked for engagement and richness of language, as well as many other factors. Could I please ask the judges who worked on this to stand? And then, if there are any other members from the Children's Book Committee here this evening, could we ask you to stand as well? Thank you. Thank you for your work on this. Um, so I'd like to also note that um, the seal that you see projected on the screen is going to be on the award-winning books um, for future reprints of the work. And this image was originally created more than 25 years ago um, and was adapted for this purpose um, for this new award by Laurent Lynn, a Children's Book Committee member and an artistic director of Simon & Schuster. So thank you. And um, also another thank you to the Children's Book Committee for this year's donation of over 75 new picture books in Spanish to our library. Um, the Bank Street College Children's Library, which is up on the fifth floor, has the largest selection of children's books um, of any school in the city, and it's largely due to the work of the Children's Book Committee. Um, these books are available for checkout on the fifth floor, and special thanks to librarian Audrey Price for processing each volume so they could be ready for checkout today. <laughs> and I also want to thank Kidlet TV for live streaming this event um, around the world. I know there are many folks watching online, and we're really pleased that you're able to join us. And finally, I want to thank the Bank Street Bookstore, who you saw out in the lobby. Um, and they have copies of all of tonight's award winners um, available for signing and sale at the end of the program. So again, welcome, and thank you for being here. And I'll turn it back over to Cindy. Hello again. I want to share a little bit more about how the list and award came into being. For over a decade, I evaluated graduate student teachers in bilingual education in their classrooms. During these site visits, I noticed a dearth of high quality, high interest picture books in Spanish in the classroom. I didn't see anything that would light the reading spark in any child. And so when I came to Bank Street and I joined the Children's Book Committee, I started to notice that there were some really good picture books that were coming in both languages. And I thought, we could pull those out and make a separate list, and then everyone else would know about them too. So we are in the fourth year of our list. Um, the first year, we had 17 picture books. This year, we had 43. Um, we are so grateful to the Children's Book Council to, they've gotten the word out to publishers so that they know we're reviewing. Um, and uh, I really want to thank the members of the book committee and the jury. Reviewing this material is no small amount of work and everyone participated from a very deep, deep commitment a desire to bring high quality work to children so that they would learn to love to read. And I can't thank you all enough for that. The conversations and the thought that went into picking these award books, I wish you could have all heard it. It was so heartfelt. It was so thoughtful. 
it just, um, the thought and effort was amazing. So I thank you all again for that. Um, before I close, I want to bring your attention to two books cited for um, honorable mention, Alma and Dreamers. Um, these works were absolutely adored by the committee. They are already in every bilingual classroom in the city. But if you haven't had a chance to look at them, please do. Uh, there's some in our case, but also the Bank Street Bookstore has copies, and there's been, there are copies upstairs in the library. They are just not to be missed. And now, it's with great delight that I turn this over to our inaugural keynote speaker, the wonderful Juji Morales. Well, hola a todos. Hola. 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 Eso. <laughs> Mi nombre es Yuji Morales y yo hablo español. Eso. I speak Spanish. Who else speaks Spanish here? Yeah, I can. Eso. <laughs> I, I love Spanish, of course. And I love Spanish because that's what I grew up speaking. And I thought that um, because we are having a celebration today, uh, a, a celebration of the Spanish language, I wanted to bring you some words, mm -hmm. como un regalo. So I brought you mm -hmm. the word amistad. And if you don't speak Spanish, you probably will know what it means, but I'm going to tell you something that I have discovered. Um, when I came to the United States, I didn't speak English either. I had a few words. And I've been watching Sesame Street, too. So there were some words that I could understand. But for the most part, I, I didn't really understand most of what I could find in, 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 in written, in books, um, except one day I went to the public library. And, um, and I found that in the shelves of the library were books that I could see other people taking the books out and opening them, opening these books. And, um, and copying, because I have always been really good at copying. Um, copying what I was seeing, I, I did go and take books out of the shelves as well. And then I opened them and I, then of course I realized that I was not gonna be able to understand them because of the written words, because I didn't speak the language. But if I look at the images that were next to the words, then things will start to shine their, their meaning through. So if you don't know what amistad means, then I'm going to offer you an image so maybe you know what amistad means. Amistad is, in, in English, is friendship. And I have another word, respeto. What does respeto mean? It means respect. It means putting ourselves in the shoes of the others and being able to even understand and realize what others are going through so we can have respeto. Or oh, lose. Yeah, it means light. It means a light that, that, that we have inside of ourselves that is reflected in the outside, the light that we create. Of course, we also have obscuridad. And if you don't know what obscuridad means, it means darkness, beautiful darkness. The, the darkness that allows us to see all the other ranges of, of the light to the dark and what's in between. Esperanza. If you don't know what esperanza means, you can always look at <laughs> these images from Harvesting Hope the story of Cesar Chavez. And this is um, an image um, from, from, from Harvesting Hope. Uh, this is the last page of the story of uh, the journey that Cesar Chavez, the hero, the leader, the man who believed that we could create and build things from our creativity rather than from violence or from fighting with our hands. And the way that we look up at the possibilities give us something like hope. 
or a word like hermandad. So I'm going to give you an image for hermandad. <laughs> and that's kind of like what hermandad means, is, is this, this connection that siblings feel for each other. And that's a connection that we can also feel for each other because we are uh, brothers, sisters, siblings in this world, just like English and Spanish, in fact. There has always, there is always this discussion about like, well, maybe children should be learning to speak in English because then they will have more resources and they will do better in their lives, especially if they are living in a, in a place like the United States. What is almost never acknowledged is that the Spanish is just as a strong language as English is. And that through Spanish and other languages as well, but through those mother languages, we start learning how to live in this world, even if we don't never, if we never learn a different language like English, for instance. Um, in the way that in Spanish is not even just a bridge towards higher learning, it is already higher learning. We already know in, our, in the languages that we spoke when we were born and when we were growing up, how to deal with life, how to deal with what we know to inhabit this space. So hermandad is something that also applies to the way that we speak and the different languages that are part of our nation, of our world. And there is this word, sanación. If you don't know what sanación means, I'll give you an image. Sanación means healing. I am in a quest of finding and trying to learn how do we heal? There are so many things happening right now. They have been happening for a long time. And I really have that, that question in front of me um, when I'm creating, when I'm making books. That is one of the things that pull me. How do we heal? How do we make our work to be the medicine that our children need, that our families need, that the people in this world need? And little by little, I'm, I'm kind of finding my way. Most of the time, I feel lost. Because I recognize that that's something that I'm not going to learn all by myself. I am never going to learn it alone. I'm always going to need everybody. I'm going to need all of you to learn how we heal. Sometimes people have told me, well, we have to transform ourselves. Transformación. And I have an image for you. We transform ourselves so that we can be part of whatever is put in front of us. Sometimes just staying the way we were before um, might not be enough. Sometimes we do have to unlearn things so that we can unlearn the new ones, and so that eventually we can have a celebración. Una celebración como esta. And yes, we will celebrate. We will dance, we will cheer, we will maybe even have cake. I hear that they have alfajores today. <laughs> and one of the, things, the ways that I've learned is that our way of healing, at least I learned that from my family, from uh, the place where I come from, is that something that usually heals are las historias. Wow, isn't it powerful when we are able to hear the stories, to tell the stories, to tell our stories? I've been in that journey for a while, learning how we tell our stories. and. I know that the stories is not something that only comes from one place and from what one person. Historias come from everybody. Just look at these books here. There are just a handful of them, but it's just the sample of what really is all around us. Every one of us here has a story. At least one, but in reality we have much more than that. We have many stories. And I've learned that when something really difficult is happening, even something terrible, one of the ways in which sometimes we can find that medicine that we need is that we get together and we tell our stories. I'm going to tell you a little bit about 
this story. And this is a picture of my son Kelly and I, um, one of the first days after we entered the United States. Um, Kelly's dad took that uh, photograph as we had just entered the United States uh, for the first time and uh, we were in our way to Kansas City starting a, a road trip that will take us to Iowa where we were come to see grandpa who was very ill. And that was the reason why uh, I came to the United States with my son. And when I did, when I came, I had no idea that I was gonna stay here in the United States. That in fact, once I crossed that, um, that bridge and that uh, frontera, like we call it, uh, that in fact, I was gonna stay here and I wasn't gonna be able to go back as I had thought. And from there, um, a story began, and what happened next is this first, this inability to understand uh, where I was, the inability to, under, inability to understand what other people were telling me, and the inability to understand what I was doing here. And then something happened, and it is that my mother-in-law put me and my son in her car one day and she only spoke English, so she wouldn't be able to tell me where I was going. Um, and because I didn't speak English and, and she didn't speak Spanish, she put me in, my, in her car and opened the door and then just let me out free in a place I have never seen before. And that place, of course, is, do you know what that place is? It is the library. Yeah. It is la biblioteca, un lugar que nunca antes habíamos visto, misterioso, fantástico. And I always tell people like, you know, the, for me it was mysterious, the library was mysterious, because I had no idea what you could do there. And because I was also afraid, like, what if I t take, touch something or do something that I'm not supposed to do? And of course they tell me, you are not supposed to be here, just get out. No. Oh, yeah, I also had a baby, and my baby will cry just a few minutes after we entered the library. And, and, and then I was always afraid that this is the moment where they are going to say, you cannot be here. But the library, it is a welcoming place. At least we want it to be. We work so that it can be a welcoming place. A place in where I actually met my family. Those books, these are images from the book Soñadores, Dreamers. Um, those books that you see there, well, they are the portraits of my family. Mm -hmm. Because when I entered the library for the first time, I actually entered my home. And there I got to meet all these different um, beings, existences, presences that were these books and these stories. And of course I fell in love with them, so I had to make their, their portraits. Mm -hmm. but one of the most amazing things that happened when I entered the library, besides the fact that there were books that I could kind of understand, besides the fact that the library was a place in where I could find myself living, that it was my home, besides that is that in that place, there were books that were made by people who had last names like mine que tenían mi color de piel, that they had the, my skin color, people who perhaps spoke Spanish, or people that had come from another place that were also uh, immigrantes, like me. And this opportunity to realize that people who speak Spanish not only can be inside a library and find themselves into the books, but they are more than that. They are not only the, 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 the patrons of the library or the people that can come and grab these books, but they are in fact also the ones who, when they might be the editors, the librarians, the authors, the illustrators of these books, and not only the one that cleans the library. I was in Guatemala uh, a few months ago, 
And it was, it was wonderful being there because being a Latin American country, of course, they don't have the libraries like the places we have here in the United States. There is not also a robust children's book uh, world like the one we have here. That doesn't mean we don't have stories. It doesn't mean that places like Guatemala or Mexico or anywhere else, we don't have writers, illustrators, stories that are worth telling. What happens is that because of the economical situation, well, libraries don't work like the way they work here. And I was there, and what the, the people in Guatemala are doing is wonderful because they are actually teaching ch uh, teachers to utilize the books that come from the United States in Spanish in there. So what they are doing is they are like they, they see that a new book was coming out and, and is um and is in Spanish and they start asking donors to help them get those books into places like in Guatemala. And um and they are learning how to apply those books and those stories to the children of Guatemala. I, you know, I, most of us are always thinking that we are making books so that they can be read here in the United States. What we don't know is that some of those books now are making in there. And I'm so glad they are making in there because you know what? A lot of those kids who are reading those books now in places like Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Argentina, everywhere else, someday might be the citizens of the United States. So when we think about making books that are only gonna serve a certain uh, range of children here in the United States, in fact, we are missing the fact that even our nation, even the United States, is formed by more than just the people who speak English. And when I was there, I met Martina, and it was such an amazing thing because Martina actually doesn't even speak Spanish very well. She speaks very little. And I went there because I wanted her to teach me how to do the weaving that she's so good at. And while I was there, she, uh, she was getting some um, text messages. And, 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 and she was teaching me, and she would stop, and she had this worried face. And then I look at her, and she says, I'm getting these messages, and I need to answer to them because I am the director of my a, a comité, you know, they have a, um, 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 what's the word? Board. Yeah, well, you know, it's, 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 un, it's un, este, una comitiva de mujeres. It's a group of women who are working together as a collective. Thank you so much. <laughs> she is the, the, she's the director of the, or her collective. They are all weavers, and even though she's in charge of this collective, she doesn't um, write in Spanish. And she couldn't address that people were asking her questions and she needed to text. And she says, I don't know how to write and read in Spanish. Um, and I told her that she could use her phone actually and do some uh, voice messages and that will help her. But as, as we were doing that, we were also becoming friends. And then I say, you know, I'm gonna bring you a book tomorrow. And because by, any, by a chance I had a book of Viva Frida with me. And it was one of the most beautiful moments I had, which was that Martina opened the book and just like children do here in the United States, she, will, she neither understood English or Spanish, but she could see the images. And as she was seeing the images, she could understand the story and then make sense of the words that she was looking at. And what happened at the end of the book is that she said, I am an artist, like Viva Frida. How we tell our story, there are many ways. Martina tells her stories by weaving inside of her, of her, of her with her threads and her needles by weaving uh, the mountains, the place where she lives in, and weaving the birds and, and the deer. And she was telling him about all of the things that she's putting in her work. Because yes, she is an artist. We have many different ways of doing that. We tell our stories in the way that we write, in the way that we make images, illustrations, also in the way that we speak. We tell them with our feet, we tell them with our elbows, we tell them with even the way that we dress or the colors that we wear today. 
we have many different ways of telling our stories. Children can tell their stories, and they don't have to be writers yet. They don't have to be illustrators yet. We all have many ways of telling what we need to tell. And I hope that what we are doing here today, which is celebrating these books that are, being, that are telling our stories in Espanol, but also they are telling the stories in the language of picture books. The language of picture book is much more than just the, the words or the images. It is also the way that you open the book, the way that you turn the page, the way that you, your view goes to one side or the other of the story. There is much more than one language that is utilized in making a picture book. And the fact that we are celebrating today that those books can also be written in a language other than English, that they had been written in Spanish, allowed us for maybe a family like the one that I was with my baby, someday to find those books and where we see each of us in those stories. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ay, qué bonita celebración. Thank you so much, you, 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 Juji. When you uh, sent the PowerPoint, I did look through it, and when I saw this slide, I cried for half an hour. <laughs> I just thought it was such a lovely sentiment. Thank you very much. Okay, so now, it's my great pleasure to bring to the podium two distinguished colleagues who will present the best Spanish language picture book awards and honors. The first, Carla España. Dr. Carla is an instructor in the bilingual TESOL program at Bank Street College Graduate School of Education, that's here, and co-author of En Comunidad, Lessons for Centering the Voices and Experiences of Bilingual Latinx Students, and the wonderful Cecilia Espinosa. Cecilia is an associate professor at Lehman College, CUNY, where she works with bilingual teachers. Please help me welcome them. Gracias, gracias, Gigi. Qué emoción. Whew, I needed to take a deep breath after that. Wow. All four of the picture books we are celebrating today appear on the SLA's Best Spanish Language Picture Book of the Year list chosen by the Children's Book Committee of the Bank Street College of Education. We are delighted to present these award certificates for three honor books. El primer, el primer libro de honor para el mejor libro infantil del año 2020 es De Donde Eres, Where Are You From? So that is the first honor book for Best Spanish Language Picture Book of the Year 2020. Y es por Shamile Saeed Mendez, ilustrado por Jaime Kim and HarperCollins uh, Publisher. When asked by friends when she is, uh, where she is really from, it's a really common question, where are you from? A little girl does not know how to respond. When she asks her dear grandfather, he responds, but does not give her the answer she is expecting. Beautiful dreamlike um, acrylic illustrations appear throughout the book. An Argentinian faculty member said of this book, I love De Donde Eres. It is written simply and addresses a very meaningful question, especially for me as an immigrant. The book made me cry. It brings up references that are very specific to where I am from. The author, Shamile Mendez, is not able to attend, but has sent a video. Hello, I'm Shamile Sayed Mendez, and I'm the author of Where Are You From? De Donde Eres. I'm deeply honored for the opportunity to receive the second place award from the Center for Children's Literature at Bank Street College of Education. How exciting to be recognized in this first edition of the award for a book written in, in or translated into Spanish. Muchas gracias. Thank you to my wonderful team without whom this book wouldn't have been possible, my agent Linda Camacho, the HarperCollins family, especially my editor Clarissa Wong, illustrator Jamie Kim, and designer Erika de Chavez, all women of color, their influence added layers that go beyond the words and pictures on paper. Thank you to mi comunidad latina, especially las musas, 
a collective of women and non-binary Latinx authors. We represent the many facets of what it means to be a Latinx creator, celebrating the unique ways in which we manifest our shared heritage and language. My special gratitude goes to the teachers, librarians and educators. Your labor to share the books our children need and have been clamoring for is essential in our common ideal of showing stories that celebrate our children's unique lives and experiences. As a child obsessed with books and languages, it was my mother, other book lovers and educators like you who encouraged my healthy obsession. Thanks to them, I found the works of my literary madrinas, Maria Elena Walsh, Laura de Betach, Elsa Borneman, and fellow Rosarinian Alma Maritano, who painted with words the feelings and emotions of an experience I didn't know how to express as a child born at the cost of the military dictatorship, a regime that extended well into my elementary school years. These authors wrote stories of hope and courage, and even when sometimes I came across a short story or a piece written anonymously to safeguard their lives, their words were seeds of freedom and hope that found fertile ground in my heart. They made me into the woman I am today. Thanks to them, I know where and whom I am from. Although I have lived in the United States longer than I lived in my birth country, Argentina, and have been an American citizen for a long time, not a day goes by in which I'm not asked this simple question for which there's not a simple answer. Where are you from? Usually the person is curious about my accent or my name. As an immigrant, I have come to accept the price of living in a land in which I'm the root of my children's family tree instead of the fruit. But when my children don't know how to answer, I ponder this question and its effects daily. Their experience isn't unique. Many of the children in our lives have to explain and even excuse their identity and existence to complete strangers with the emotional cost that comes from having to sort through confusing concepts of origin, belonging, and identity, all on display in a public setting. Trying to help my own children answer this question, I did what I do best, or what I love doing the most. I wrote, I wrote them a poem. Still, finding an answer wasn't easy. The places they come from extend all over the world, but more borders on a map move, Countries disappear, like my abuela Isabel Yugoslavia. Some of, us had, some of us had to run away from oppressive governments or after natural disasters, leaving family pictures and loved ones behind. But the love of the family from whence we come is stronger than ideologies, more powerful than changing laws and hurricanes. Our legacy isn't only the citizens stated, stated on our passports, but also the unspoken attributes that were passed down from generation to generation. Thank you for celebrating that this not so simple question can become a bridge that brings hearts closer. I wish I were there so you all could share your, your own journeys with me. I hope that when you turn to your neighbor, the person sitting next to you at this ceremony and you ask, where are you from? You'll see that beyond little details, their reply is always the same. We are from the dreams of all those who came before us. Thank you. Jamie Kim, the illustrator, is uh, also not able to attend and has sent a video. Hi, this is Jamie Kim, the illustrator of Where Are You From? Um, I am incredibly pleased that Where Are You From? has received this wonderful prize. And congratulations to Shamile who wrote this amazing book. Um, I would like to say thank you to the editor and designer, everyone in HarperCollins who worked for this book. Um, yeah, I still remember the day I first read the manuscript of this book. And as soon as I read the story, I thought, this is a book that every child has to read no matter where they came from. And right now, I am so glad that I'm not the only one who is impressed by the story of this book and everyone loves this book. Yeah, um, yeah, it is such an honor that I could be a part of making this amazing book. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.
editor of De Donde Eres, Clarissa Wong will come forward to accept the award on behalf of both Shamile and Jamie. <laughs> Gracias, Carla. So, um, our next um, silver medalist is Mario y el agujero en el cielo. Como un químico salvó nuestro planeta. Mario and the hole in the sky, how a chemist saved our planet, por Elizabeth Rush, ilustrado por Teresa Martinez, traducido por Carlos de Calvo, Charlotte, Charles Bridge Publishers. A Mexico-born scientist helped solve the ozone crisis in the 1980s and gives hope in the fight against global warming. Mixed media illustrations, source notes, bibliography, timeline, and more. One of our judges said about the book, for Mexicans, Mario Molina is a hero. This book describes Mario as a curious young boy growing up in Mexico whose family encourages him to follow his dream and become a scientist. This book also describes his immigration to the United States that ultimately led to winning the 1995 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. I believe that one of the most important contributions of this book is the potential it, that it has for many Hispanic students to identify themselves with Mario Molina. As a curious scientist, a Mexican immigrant, and an environmentalist activist who believes that science can make a better world. Author Elizabeth Rush could not be here with us today, but she has sent a video. Thank you so much for honoring Mario and the Hole in the Sky with this award. I hope and believe that we'll, it will help this important story reach a broad audience. When I started the book more than a decade ago, my children were five and eight years old. I sensed the fear and desperation that they and their friends felt about climate change. And I wanted to give them a message of hope. I wanted them to know that we have actually imperiled our planet before and we fixed it. And I wanted them to know that the effort was led by a Mexican-born American chemist, Mario Molina. Mario and the Hole in the Sky is a real-life hero story about how a boy's interest in science led him to literally save the planet and what his story means for the fight against global climate change. Dr. Molina and his colleagues struggled to get people to take the problem seriously. As soon as they discovered the ozone destruction, they held a press conference. No one paid much attention. They contacted other media and public officials, but press and politicians ignored them. Some people called the ozone crisis a hoax, called Dr. Molina a liar, and even accused him of being a spy trying to sow chaos in the United States. Does any of this sound familiar? <laughs> But Dr. Molina and many scientists persisted. Eventually, leaders from all around the globe gathered in Montreal to tackle the problem. 190 countries, nearly every nation on the planet, agreed to stop making ozone-destroying chemicals. And today, the ozone layer is healing itself. Dr. Molina did not tackle ozone destruction alone. No one person could. Many other scientists contributed to the efforts, and countless advocates and political leaders pushed for change. I couldn't have tackled writing this book alone either. Dr. Molina shared many hours on the phone with extensive interviews and fact-checking. I'm deeply grateful to his time and his trust. I'm also deeply grateful to Charles Bridge for publishing a Spanish language version of this book so that the story could reach a wider, relevant audience. I want to thank Carlos Calvo for his beautiful translation, and I want to thank illustrator Teresa Martinez for bringing the story to life through the international language of art. When I asked Dr. Molina what he thought would happen with the climate crisis, he said, we can work with all countries, all cultures, all peoples of the world. We can work together 
It is possible. We saved our planet once and we can do it again. Thank you for helping spread that message to young readers and thank you for the award. So um, illustrator Teresa Martinez has sent us a video from Mezcales Nayarit, Mexico. The video is in Spanish, so I'm gonna translate after. <laughs> Me siento muy orgullosa de haber formado parte del equipo que llevó adelante este libro y muy contenta por recibir este premio ahora. Es un honor y un privilegio, así que agradezco a Bank Street College of Education. Creo que los libros infantiles son un gran vehículo para inspirar y para soñar, así que una de mis prioridades como ilustradora siempre ha sido acercar la ciencia a los niños y hacerles entender que una historia real o un experimento científico puede ser tan magnífico como un cuento de fantasía y magia, y además de todo está al alcance de sus manos. Por lo mismo quiero agradecer al doctor Mario Molina por ser ahora una gran fuente de inspiración para los jóvenes, así como lo ha sido para mí al trabajar en este libro. Gracias además a Elizabeth Roche, ya que sin su pluma esto no habría sido posible. Quiero recordar que ahora más que nunca debemos de contribuir al planeta. Si a partir del descubrimiento del doctor Molina hemos logrado tantas cosas, imaginen lo que podemos seguir logrando en el futuro. Gracias. So here's the translation. I am so proud to have been part of the team that created this book and I'm very happy to have received this prize. It is an honor and a privilege, and I thank Bank Street College of Education. I believe that children's books are a great vehicle to inspire and dream. One of my priorities as an illustrator has been to make science accessible to children and make them understand that a nonfiction story or a science experiment can be an, as magnificent as a story about fantasy or magic. It is, within, it is all within their grasp. I want to thank Mario Molina for being a great source of inspiration for children, as it, has been, it was for me to work on his book. Thank you so much, Elizabeth Rush. Without your pen, none of this would have been possible. I want to remind you that, you that more than ever, we must contribute to the planet. Since the discovery of Dr. Mario Molina, we have discovered so many things. Imagine what we can, we can accomplish in the future. And so we're going to go to the next uh, book. Carla? Our next honoree is Sembrando Historias, Pura Belpre, Bibliotecaria y Narradora de Cuentos, Planting Stories, The Life of Librarian and Storyteller, Pura Belpre, por Anika Aldamuy Denise, ilustrado por Paola Escobar, traducido por Omaira Ortiz. And it's from HarperCollins Publishers. Coming from Puerto Rico, Pura Belpre brought Spanish language stories to children of the New York Public Library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Beginning with tales from her abuela, warm and highly detailed earth tone digital illustrations. One of the jurors commented, this book which talks about Pura's life, her work as a librarian, a storyteller and an author, and her legacy of quote, planting stories, will inspire children to share their creativity and enlarge the publishing world of tomorrow. Pura Belpre may be considered the mother of Latinx literature for children in the United States. As a former member of several Pura Belpre committees at the American Library Association, I am so happy to see this book shared with children. We are so thrilled that the author of Planting Stories, Anika Aldamuy Denis, is with us here this evening. Anika, please come forward to accept <laughs> your award. <laughs> Without the posting. <laughs> We're terrible. It's so hard. It's so difficult. Gracias. It's great to be back at Bank Street College. Okay. I don't have any slides. Okay. <laughs> Um, thank you to Bank Street, to the Children's Book Committee, and all 
the members of the selection committee uh, for choosing Sembrando Historias as a 2020 best uh, Spanish language silver medal book. And muchas felicidades to Isabel, Zeke, Jamile, Jamie, Elizabeth, Teresa, Ruji, and Juana. I also want to thank Omaira Ortiz for her beautiful translation, and of course, the amazing Paula Escobar for her transcendent illustrations. And I want to thank my team who's here today, <laughs> my agent, <laughs> Emily Van Beek, my incredible editor, Nancy and Telly. <laughs> yes, please clap. <laughs> and my amazing art director, Chelsea Claire Donaldson. In the author's note to Planting Stories, I described the moment I first had the idea to write a picture book about Pura del Pre. I was visiting the main branch of the New York Public Library during the exhibition, the ABC of it, Why Children's Books Matter. I turned the corner and there was the iconic photo of Pura del Pre storytelling at Casita Maria Community Center in the Bronx. Beneath it were two of her original handmade puppets and her book, Perez y Martina. Seeing the bold inked pages, I was instantly brought back to being six years old and visiting the public library in Staten Island with my Titi Rosie. The Titi who insisted I have my own library card in my own name. I heard her rich voice reading the book to me, words and songs in Spanish and English, and the nursery rhymes too, about a little mouse who falls into a pot. Ratencito Perez cayó en la olla por la golosina de la cebolla y la cucarachita Martina la canta y yo lloro. <laughs> so with Titi's words in my head and heart, I went back home and began my research. Discovering the beautiful picture book by Lucia Gonzalez and Lulu de Lacar, La Belita de los Cuentos, along with the stories I read to the children, the brilliant biography by Lisa Sanchez Gonzalez, and of course, the treasure of the Pura del Pre papers at Centro de Estudios Puerriqueños. I began to draft my story. I wrote and rewrote, sorry, I'm gonna move that, like I would with any picture book. But this one carried extra weight because I wanted it to be worthy. I knew what Pura del Pre meant to my community, to Latinx educators and librarians, to those who knew her in the heady days of Arturo Schomburg, Jesus Calon, and Augusta Baker. So I took a long time with it. <laughs> Emily, my agent, she'd check in every few months and be like, so um, how's it going? <laughs> she was so patient with me. And then, in the midst of writing Planting Stories, my father passed away suddenly. Um, and I mention my father because it was my Titi Rosie who helped to raise him after his mother passed away when he was just a baby. And Titi's pain was that of a mother grieving her son, even though this was her, her nephew. Um, and I wanted to lift up her spirits, so I told her that I was writing a book about Pura del Pre. And she was so happy to hear this. We talked and talked and the floodgates of her childhood memories opened to me. She shared memories of being in elementary school in the Bronx and um, having no English, and um, how, because she sometimes mixed up words in the beginning, her classmates made fun of her and called her stupid. Um, and how the discovery of a Puerto Rican folklorist named Pura del Pre and the story she wrote in English and Spanish was a profound gift to her. How she would go on to be an A-plus student, not only in English, but in every subject she studied in school. Finding books she could see herself in gave her confidence. No wonder, I thought, no wonder that for Titi, a library card was sacred. So I finished writing the book because I told my aunt that I would, and I knew she would hold me to it. <laughs> And because I wanted to honor the gifts she gave me, the folklore of my culture, and the gift Pura del Pre gave her of being seen. But most impo importantly, I wanted young readers to know Pura's incredible life story, not just Latinx kids, but all kids. 
As Pura wrote in her essay on library work with bilingual children, children will be better prepared to understand the value of another culture when they know the value of their own. All of us in this room share a responsibility to make sure kids have access to books in their native languages. I'm so grateful to my team at HarperCollins for their commitment to publishing books in Spanish. I think the great Kwame Alexander's, Alexander's words sum it up beautifully. Children's book creators must accept the responsibility of planting seeds of diversity and equity, of empathy and unity. Book publishers must provide the vast fields of hope for us to do our work. And librarians and teachers must continue to water them, nurture them, and grow them. Thank you again to CBC, SLA, and Bank Street College for nurturing those vast fields of hope by elevating and celebrating quality children's literature in Spanish. And again, mil gracias for this very special honor. Thank you, that was beautiful. Illustrator Paola Escobar lives in Bogota, Colombia and could not be with us today but has sent a video. Hola, yo soy Paola Escobar, la ilustradora de Planting Stories y hoy estoy muy agradecida y muy honrada de recibir este reconocimiento para nuestro libro Sembrando Historias. Muchas, muchas gracias al Bank Street College, a Anika Denise por esta maravillosa historia que amé profundamente ilustrar, también a Harper Collins y a todo el equipo por el increíble trabajo que hizo con este libro. Estoy muy, muy feliz de que la historia de Pura Belpre haya llegado a manos de niños y adultos. Es muy valioso que la literatura en español sea reconocida. Esa era una de las labores que hacía nuestra maravillosa Pura Belpre. Y yo creo que ella hoy también estaría muy, muy feliz de recibir este reconocimiento. Así que muchas, muchísimas gracias y les mando un saludo desde Bogotá, Colombia. Paola Escobar said, Hello, I am Paola Escobar, the illustrator of Planting Stories. I'm very thankful and honored to receive this recognition for our book. Thank you, thank you to Bank Street College and to Anika, who wrote this wonderful story that I loved deeply to illustrate. Also to Harper Collins and the whole team for the incredible job they did with this book. I am very, very happy that the story of Pura Belpre has gotten into the hands of children and adults. It is so valuable that literature in Spanish is recognized. It is one of the goals of Buda Belpre. I believe she would have been very happy to receive this recognition. Thank you very much, and I send you greetings from Bogotá, Colombia. And Nancy and Telly, the editor of Planting Stories, will come forward and accept the award for Paola and the uh, translator, Omaira Ortiz, who could also not be with us today. Thank you. And now, I feel like I should have the envelopes. <laughs> next year, next year. El mejor libro infantil del año 2020. The best Spanish language picture book of the year 2020 is... Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> I mean, you've all read this in the sentence. Mi papi tiene una moto. Oh. My Papi Has a Motorcycle, por Isabel Quintero, ilustrado por Sig Peña, traducido por Andrea Montejo. Daisy's ride through her village on the back of her papi's motorcycle is the memory of home she will keep forever. Vibrant, detail-filled illustrations that make the reader want to savor every element on every page. One juror said, I love the beautiful poetic language of this book, the relationship between father and daughter, as well as the honor paid to labor. Uh, neither Isabel um, Quintero, Zig Peña, or Andrea Montejo could be with us today. However, we have author Isabel Quintero's video acceptance, where she acknowledges everyone's contribution to this wonderful book.
Keep going. Buenos Aires, New York from Southern California. And welcome to my home. I'd like to apologize for not being there in person, but thank you for understanding. I want to start off congratulating the other books being honored tonight. De Donde Eres by Jamila and Jamie, Sembrando Historias by Anika, Paola, and Omaira, Mario y el Agujero en el Cielo by Elizabeth, Teresa, and Carlos, Soñadores by Yuyi, and To Alma y Como Obtuvo Su Nombre by Juana. All of these wonderful and important books that should be celebrated for their contributions to children's literature, but also to children's lives, and to our lives, really. To be honest, I don't think I'd be writing picture books without having read Yu Yi's Los Gatos Black on Halloween or just a minute many years ago when I was an elementary school librarian. So, muchísimas gracias, Yu Yi. My papi has a motorcycle, is a love letter to the city I grew up in and to my dad. My yapa is a cabinet installer and has been for many years. So this award honors him and others like him as well because the book is also about working class folks the folks who built homes and the roads we ride on. In it, Daisy is proud of her puppy and happy to join him on an evening ride on the back of his motorcycle, sawdust flying behind them. To her, her puppy is a hero and an important member of her community. Zeke Peña captured the vitality of Mexican and Latinx neighborhoods across the U.S. while still honoring a very specific place something that I think is a difficult thing to do, especially since I, have, since I have no artistic ability whatsoever, as my mother has no problem in reminding me. When my papi has a motorcycle became mi papi tiene una moto, it meant the world to me. Andrea Montejo has done an amazing job translating not only the words, but all of the emotions that I intended. There is nothing lost. The translation also meant that the first time I read the book out loud with my own papi in the audience, a man who doesn't speak English, I could read it in Spanish and nothing was lost on him. It was as if I was reading to him. We've gotten so much love for this little book about a girl and her papi riding around a city very few people have heard of, Corona, California. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. This award, the first biannual Best Spanish Language Picture Book Award from Bank Street, is a great honor because it honors not only creators and translators, <clears throat> but also readers and Spanish speakers. It recognizes the importance of bilingualism and it's a rejection of the English-only ideas that so many of us had to grow up with. It is a reminder that our language is beautiful and necessary and important and should not be whispered, but instead should be spoken out loud and put in books proudly, yes, and especially here in the United States. I'd like to thank Bank Street College of Education Spanish Language Affiliate of the Children's Book Committee for the time spent reading all the books who were up for the award. I know this is not an easy task. I'd also like to thank Dr. Cindy Wheel and Dr. Carla España for their leadership and continual support. Thank you to the Coquila team, my editor, Namrata Chopathi, to Zeke Peña, who I've had the honor to call collaborator and without whose illustrations, the book wouldn't be quite as exciting and especially to Andrea Montejo for her incredible translation, for her ability to keep the love and language of the story intact. A big thank you to my family and friends, especially my papi, and a big thank you to all of you spending your weeknights celebrating books and Spanish and translation. Que vivan los libros. Um, Namrata Tripathi is gonna president of Coquilla. Can you please come forward so you can accept the awards? And now, um, Cindy, gonna go. Congratulations again to all of our finalists. So, please everyone make your way to the lobby. Anika and Juji are gonna stay here for a minute to be interviewed by Kidlit TV. Upon your departure, uh, and then there's gonna be a book signing, and there's also going to be a wonderful reception with music, food, so please stick around. Um, upon your departure, we do have a gift bag for you. Uh, please turn in the name tag um, 
to the person giving out the gift bags uh, if you in fact received one if not don't worry about it um, thank you again to all the publishers who put things in the gift bags for you and thank you for coming to celebrate with us today you can watch this live stream uh, using the URL on the back of your program tomorrow or any other day of your choosing and thank you so much for coming um, despite everything going on and um, we look forward to seeing you again in two years when we have the next best Spanish language picture book. <laughs>
biannual award of the uh, the uh, it has a title. It's the uh, the Best Spanish Language Picture Book Awards. And we have our keynote speaker, Juji. Yes, thank you. That was a great keynote. Yes, and Anika, uh, whose uh, book, uh, Planting Stories, uh, got a, a silver medal. Yes, so thank you both for being here. And in your keynote, you talked about uh, your work is medicine. And, and yeah, can you just tell us a little bit more about that? I think that the more that I am making books, I'm discovering that more than make books, what, I, what I'm trying to find is this way of making my experiences be permeated by, by the needs of this moment. Mm -hmm. as, it's as if in every book I'm actually uh, processing my learning, the way that I see the world, because I know that children do the same. So at this point in which we are in this world, I, w I wish that I could find in my work the medicine that we need so that we can heal and actually be a better place and where children can grow up. Right, and so each of your book is a, a dose of medicine, so, uh, sort of, yes. And so so what's the next dose that you're working on or your next book? Wow, well, the next book I'm working on is I'm trying to question precisely that, to answer that question, which is how do you heal something that feels irreparable? And how do you tell that to children? It's not an easy task, so it's, it's been a journey trying to understand how you do that. Yes. Well, thank you. And Anika, your book about Poor Bell Prey, uh, Planting Stories. Now, you, did, you talked about research. And so what was the, like, the most surprising thing you learned or the most interesting thing you learned about your subject? Oh, I learned so many amazing things about Buddha. Um, but I think one thing that stood out to me was that when she submitted her stories at first, they were not they were rejected at first, and I, th I always thought, okay, she's um, a woman and an author and a librarian juggling all these things, and I, I guess I just assumed that they would have been taken right away, you know, because it was Pura Bel Prey stories, but she had to work at it, she had to keep trying, show perseverance, persistence, and eventually she had an editor accept her work, but I felt um, that I related to her even more because I know what a journey writing is and how, how it takes courage to put your words out there, especially because these were the first mainstream Spanish language picture books published in the United States. So it took guts and it took a lot of um, hard work and perseverance. So I think that was, it was a, a surprising thing to learn, but also a very inspiring thing to learn about right. her. Right. You know, uh, one of the... Uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, authors today talked about uh, art being the international language, and you both had. A, uh, well, you're you're an artist, and and so you're you know you're c communicating through your your work, and we also talked about languages, and so uh, Spanish and English was mentioned a lot. So, but if you were able to like wake up tomorrow and be able to speak another language, what language would that be? Oh. Um Probably Italian because um, I have Italian on one side of my family and Puerto Rican on the other. So I would I would have all my you know <laughs> everybody yeah, covered. Both, both yeah. cultures <laughs> covered. Yes, yeah. yes. It's, it's a somewhat similar some of the words, but but I was in Italy for the first time and uh, and it's also a very beautiful language. All languages are beautiful, I think. Yes, yes. And your language? If I could wake up tomorrow speaking another language, it will be Nahuatl. Okay, and why? Because that's the language of, of, of our ancestors in Mexico. And that's a language that is also powerful language. And sometimes it doesn't get acknowledged. Like even us in Mexico sometimes don't, are unable to understand it. Well, I know there are people online waiting to meet both of you. So thank, thank you both for being here tonight. Thank you. Yes, they want to say